see on that. And then he measured again. And for the ones who already practiced, he measured before and after. So what he found was that the results were absolutely similar to the other study. So he's very honest to say, I came from the point of view that I didn't believe, but now I have to prove that it does not only with Jihon, but it works also with other meditation practices. And it works even if you don't know anything, and then you start to practice, and as short as eight weeks of practice, the genes already change. The genes that are uh, responsible for inflammation, they change. The ones that are like we call pro-inflammatory genes decrease, and the ones, uh, the genes that are called anti-inflammatory genes increase. So protecting, protecting us against the state of disease. There are other practices that we know here uh, is a study done uh, on what they call therapeutic touch, which is a practice done by several, was introduced by a nurse who was also a speaker in our prior Spiritist Medical Congress, uh, Dr. Craig Krieger, Dolores Krieger. And they did, the nurses did a study with patients that had severe burn, whether you know they had a lot of pain and they were treated with this um, uh, uh, with this approach, therapeutic touch, which is similar to what we uh, use in the spiritism called passes. It's just the imposition of uh, hands without touching the patient. And they had a much better response, um, less pain, but re better recovery and so forth. So on. And they had not been treated with different medication. Medication was exactly the same. This is another uh, type of um, practice called bioenergy. There's a lot of work now done, uh, being done on bioenergy. This has been kind of uh, being used by different groups, different uh, physicians and other practitioners. And it's, it was first initiated, as far as I know, uh, officially in the university, in the hospital of the University of Washington Medical uh, Center in Seattle. And they had a, in the hospital, they had a clinic that was um, done by volunteers, volunteers, uh, physicians, volunteer practitioners, volunteer nurses that would accept patients for free. And the patients would come on their own without being, they, they, it was not any requirement at all. They would come on a, their own will, and they were treating in the clinic for something else, whatever else they came to the clinic, to the hospital to be treated, and they could choose to go to the bioenergy treatment too. So this was one of the first official centers using bioenergy. Now there are several others in the United States. There is one that Dr. Gary Schwartz has initiated in uh, Arizona. So uh, other, other hospitals are trying to open these clinics. At this point, this is extra official. I mean, it's done by volunteers. It's a volunteer service. It's a volunteer group. They allow it, but they are not putting their stamp firmly yet. They are going, probably going to, because this is, uh, so far, there was no, nothing um, that came as negative uh, result. So again, they just put the hands on the patient. In Spiritism, we use a similar uh, approach, which is called passes. And it's basically a transference of energy, like bioenergy, like therapeutic touch. It's an, an, a transmission of energy, which in Spiritism, we know that it has two components. One component is the magnetic component, which is transmitting our own energy. So the people who do that service needs to be balanced, needs uh, to be in a good mental health so that we can transmit the best of our uh, magnetic energy to the person. But we also know 
that through our prayer, through our practice, knowing what we are doing, we are also a vehicle to the higher spirits who through us are transmitting the, the, the good energy specific for that person. So this, in the spirits book, we also find that anybody who tried to do that um, transmitting energy to others, if they are doing from their heart with the best of their intention, with love, we are always helped by higher spirits. If we are doing something good, we are always helped by a higher spirit. But when we do this in the spiritism, we have a whole preparation. We prepare ourselves so that when we are transmitting the energy, we are doing the best possible. Dr. Gary Schwartz is going to be a keynote speaker in the upcoming event. And he has several books talking about this energy. And the, his last book, published uh, in 2010, he's working on another one. In this book called The Sacred Promise, it's actually the, uh, the first lecture that he's going to uh, give at the, the Congress, talks about how science is discovering spirits collaboration with us in our daily lives. Okay? He's a scientist. He's a professor of the University of Arizona. And he does a lot of research. And uh, so he's going to be talking about that. And this book is very, very interesting. And if we talk about um, energy, we have always to mention, we have to remember Dr. Emoto's uh, research. I don't know how many of you know about this. A lot? OK. So I don't have to tell you too much about it. But Dr. Emoto in Japan, he, is, uh, he believed that the energy really can be transmitted. And he was studying water, just water. And the way the approach he used is to take the water, put under the microscope in a very cold condition so the water would kind of freeze right away. And as the water freezes in the microscope, he's looking and the water forms crystals, right? But the crystal, we think that once water crystallizes, all crystallize the same way. No. It has different forms, different formats. And he noticed that the, you, know, you can see different formats. So he started doing research. He took water from different sources. But then he started doing something like praying to a bottle of water and then looking at the, how the crystal would form in that water. And here is some of the pictures. If you go to his website, you see a lot more pictures. Here is the water, the crystal formed from the water of Lourdes, the fountain of Lourdes in France. Here is a water that was sustaining heavy metal noise compared to a water exposed to classical music, very soothing classical music. Abigail likes this. And you see here, you basically don't have any affirmation of the crystal. The water was so disturbed, probably. But look at the beautiful crystal that forms with classical music. And here is a bottle of water that he used to pray to the bottle of water. But then he decided to just write on the paper and wrap the bottle with that paper. And the words that he used, for example, love and thanks, and he left there for 24 hours. Next day, he picked up that bottle of water, that sample of that water, and looking in the microscope, look at the, the formation that he got. And the other bottle, he wrapped with the word devil, or hatred, and look at the type of crystal that formed. So you see how our thoughts can impact the water the formation of crystals. So the water absorbs that energy, and that energy may facilitate the formation of a beautiful crystal or may disturb the water, the crystal formation. So 
our body is made of about 70% water, 